Now it's only 2018, but in Iowa, it's starting to feel like 2020. This is not a time to curl up. It is not a time to shut up. It is not a time to give up. It's a time to get up, to rise up, to speak up. It's time for you not to wait for hope, but to be the hope. Senator Cory Booker was campaigning for Democrats in Iowa this weekend, but his appearance had the feel of someone testing the waters in a key presidential primary state. The New Jersey lawmaker's speech came just hours after Democrats lost the battle over Judge Brett Kavanaugh's confirmation to the Supreme Court. The Iowa caucuses marked the start of presidential primary season. This makes Senator Booker's Hawkeye State appearance a likely precursor to a 2020 run. Joining me now is Dave Weigel. He's a national reporter covering politics for The Washington Post. Dave, great to have you. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. You were at the speech on Saturday. Iowa, mm -hmm. as you know, is considered a, a testing ground for presidential messages. What was the mood like? How did voters react? Well, they were very hungry to see someone like Cory Booker. The, a trend of this year, uh, which is different than a couple of cycles we've seen for presidency, is people not really showing up to Iowa, campaigning in other states, being cautious not to look like they're running for president, that they're diverting attention from the midterm candidates. So Booker actually is the first big, bold-faced name to attend. And as soon as he walks into this room, it's about 1,500 Democrats in a ballroom. Uh, he's mobbed. He's mobbed for photos everywhere he goes. Uh, <laughs> he's mobbed after the speech for about 45 minutes before he talks to reporters again. Uh, they were happy to hear him. They were not happy and ready to vote for him that second for president. They are just happy to hear some reinforcement from D.C., I'd say was the mood. And his message was also, the clip he played was pretty representative. It was positive uh, for the most part. It was not, uh, beyond saying, you know, give up, we've lost the fight, uh, it was not negative. A big theme that he hit there and in the press conference afterward was we can't be, respond to this with negativity and meanness. We need to be the high road, nice Democrats, and we, that's how we win. Dave, how do Senator Booker's prospects look for a 2020 presidential run? Well, he's already making a couple of moves that would uh, imply he's he's looking at this race. He's placed some staffers in Iowa with the statewide campaigns. Yeah. Democrats feel really good about Iowa this year. Uh, in a way, they did not in 2016. They, they really think that the combination of the tariffs, the implementation of the Medicaid privatization has been really terrible in the state. So he's he was helping them with staff, helping them with money. He's actually in Iowa until Tuesday afternoon, campaigning for basically everyone running for office uh, at the statewide, at the federal level in the state this year. And so, yeah, there's no way around it. I mean, the other people have thought about coming. Famously, I think Alec Baldwin was the speaker of this speech last year because no Democrat wanted to look like they were jumping in first. Uh, and B B Booker was the first person to say, no, you can you can start speculating about me. I'm thinking about running for president. All right. Let me t uh, ask you about something you wrote in your midterm newsletter, the trailer right. this weekend. You write about the invisible primary, quote, mm -hmm. a term for the contest that takes place before candidates declare their presidential candidacy has been especially invisible this year. Why aren't we seeing more people? I was hinting at it before, basically. Mm -hmm. uh, the, uh, unlike other years I've seen, one, Democrats are in terrible shape. They're in pretty good shape in 2006 in Iowa. They've been in worse shape. They've, they were in pretty bad shape in 2014, but they didn't know it yet. Uh, they really feel gutted this year. A lot of Democratic state parties uh, benches are, are really emptied out after the last 10 years. So you have Democrats for more than I've see, ever seen interested in electing state legislators and mm -hmm. uh, county county commissioners and mayors. And there really is a resentment. I, 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 the chairman of the Iowa Democrats told me as much. You know, pe people get annoyed with him if, if, if he mentions anything related to 2020 because they think it's so important to win this year. That has changed the tenor. Uh, also, frankly, even, even someone like Joe Biden, uh, someone like Bernie Sanders, uh, people with 99% name recognition are uh, strong enough in Iowa, but not prohibitive. I mean, at this point, uh, there's one private poll of how 2020 candidates are doing in Iowa. Biden's at 37%. At this point, four years ago, Hillary was about 70% in Iowa. There is no oh, gigantic wow. front runner. That's creating a little bit less of an impetus to go in and build, build right now. Who is in the lead in that recent poll? Well, in that in that poll, uh, it is Biden with 37. It's, oh, it's and Sanders that's the, after the that. Lead, yeah. 37. Oh, yeah. wow, what a difference! All right, let's yeah. go, let's go back to Booker for a second. Um, as you sure. know, he's a, a frequent target of the president's. He answered yeah. questions Saturday about those attacks from the president. Let's listen to that. 
I have nothing personal against the president. If he wants to attack me personally, he can. If he wants to attack my record, uh, the reality is the people of the state of New Jersey elected me statewide, very proud of the work that I did, uh, the change that we made in Newark, the transformation going on in our city. But this is not about the president. It's not me. I will never let him pull me so low as to hate him. Uh, so how big of a factor do you think the president will be in his decision to run or not? Well, that answer from Booker, I think, nailed what Democrats want to hear. There is an impression uh, probably more prevalent in, in New York, in New York and D.C. in political circles is an impression that Democrats can't nominate somebody who can't go punch for punch or, you know, pick, pick your cliche, somebody who can brawl with the president. Uh, Democratic activists I talk to say that, that is exactly the wrong approach. The reason that Hillary Clinton, by the end of the campaign, was, was seen as, as unlikable as him was that she didn't focus on an economic agenda. When people thought of her, they thought of, oh, she's just attacking Trump. They didn't think of what she stood for, even though she stood for quite a lot. So that kind of Booker answer, I think that's what you'll hear. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, Elizabeth Warren's the same way. Someone else he attacks very frequently, often with the same attack when asked about it, and she's always asked about it. She pivots immediately to something she wants to talk about. I don't think any Democrat's going to be particularly rewarded. And you, you heard a discussion about Michael Avenatti or some people like that. I don't think they're going to be rewarded for trying to elevate themselves by bashing uh, the president because they've seen this just be a complete source of weakness, uh, both for Republicans who ran against Trump and when Democrats did it. Now, they, they, they also, as part of this, believe he has a self-destructive tendency to get himself uh, into into gaps and the things that are all the press talks about. They think what, if voters hear them talking about anything else about their agenda, that contrast is going to you know, explain itself without them having to explain it. Let me ask you, Senator Booker's speech came hours after Judge Brett Kavanaugh was confirmed mm -hmm. to the Supreme Court. He has said Kavanaugh's impeachment is not off the table if Democrats retake the Senate in November. First of all, what would the grounds be for impeachment? Uh, the ground would be that he lied under oath in, in getting confirmed and that he was hiding information that he should have revealed to the committee. Uh, this is something you hear Democrats talk about at the, at the activist level. Uh, I don't think it's what they're motivated to talk about from day to day. I mean, I, I, I spent a couple days in Iowa. I spent time with candidates for, for Congress. Did not come up when they were talking to activists or voters. Just the Kavanaugh was in the air and it was a storm cloud for them. You know, storm cloud's going to hang for 30 years, but... Uh, this is more a, uh, there are, is a certain kind of activist who wants to hear that you have a plan to disrupt this arrangement of power where mm -hmm. Democrats, because they have lost a couple of critical elections in critical years, twice with, you know, by win winning the popular vote and losing the presidency, people want to hear a strategic answer to say, okay, if you get in there, how are we going to break up this arrangement so we're not just cursed to have our laws struck down by uh -huh. conservative judges that nobody voted for. Uh, and that is the impeachment thing is one of the kind of clumsy searching ways to do it. I should say, you know, three years ago, you were hearing some of the same talk from Republicans about Ruth Bader Ginsburg when she made political statements. You, you were hearing talk about constitutional amendments that were needed to pass because because the courts would strike anything down. I think there's a little bit of uh, going around and coming around here. But I don't think you're going to see many serious Democrats say my act one impeach him because They've learned with uh, when it comes to that in the president, that's right. all people ask you about if, you, if it's what you talk about. All right. In case you're curious, the only time a Supreme Court justice was impeached, 1805, it was Samuel Chase. Dave yes. Weigel, thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it.